All right, let's uh, get uh, jump right into the three pack. Um, putting together, I mean, and this is the time of year uh, we we start talking about business plans and putting together what we're going to be doing as far as uh, strategies go for the following year. And putting together a business plan is 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 not as simple as what I'm about to share. There's a lot of things and nuances that go into it, uh, but I'm just going to give you some starting points and some great ways to start building a business plan uh, for 2021. First thing. Thing that you want to do is you want to identify who. Uh, I think for a lot of us as real estate agents with all the different things that uh, we get offered and all the different emails, offerings that we get, uh, we get really uh, just overwhelmed and we start throwing up so much stuff up against the wall, just praying and hoping uh, something's going to stick. But more importantly, we need to be a little bit more precise and on point. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to identify who. Who is going to be uh, uh, your, your target audience. And I put 2020, but it should be uh, 2021 there. And, and where is your 2021 business going to come from? So what I like to do is, uh, is start off the year. And this is a great, great exercise if you're new to real estate. But and I identify three to five key lead sources, uh, whether we're talking about your SOI, uh, whether you're talking about open houses, whether you're talking about social media. What is SOI? SOI stands for Sphere of Influence, and it's also, I think, a uh, bourbon. Uh, I'm not sure. Is it? Is it? Nope. But just oh, to clarify. We're oh, that's SOS. About... <laughs> I need help. <laughs> We're talking about sphere of influence. Yeah, yeah sphere of influence. Um, a lot of a lot of different um, a lot of different lead sources out there. And so what this will do, it's going to help you and keep you from moving forward with way way too many. Because uh, you want to focus on the ones that you feel like you're going to get the ver the majority of your business. If you've been in the business for a while, uh, take some time to look back and see where have your leads come from. You know, if you've done uh, you know. 15 or 20 closings this year, uh, but you had 40 to 50 legitimate leads, take a look and see, okay, where did the majority of those come from? And if there's any common denominators there, you want to double down on them and maybe begin to build that out. You're looking at me funny. Yeah, Nick. I was going to wait for you to finish so I could say something. Okay, go ahead. So, so I've had a few conversations recently uh, with a couple of agents that have been in the business for let's say 10, 15 years, um, and they're running into an issue where they weren't doing any type of follow-up with their sphere of influence. They weren't reaching back out to past close. They weren't saying thank you to people that were giving them referrals and they kind of wanted to know where to start. And I said, well, start today and start calling your sphere of influence. So, I mean, as you're going through your business plan, if you don't have that included in your business plan, especially when you're looking at who sent you referrals and what demographic you want to be going after, it's low hanging fruit. And that's the best place to start. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and that goes, uh, Nick goes into really point two is how you're going to do it. Uh, I mean, it's, it's the first step is identifying where, and like I said, I think we get, there's so many opportunities out there and we spend so much time chasing, you know, 10 to 12 to 15 possible lead sources instead of uh, honing it down to, you know, three to five key ones. But once you've identified those, then you've got to build a strategy. You know, how are you going to reach them? How are you going to market to them? So if you're going to go after referrals, from past clients, uh, okay, well, it, it, it just like you said, okay, you got to start, but you got to build a strategy. Uh, how are you going to communicate? How often are you going to communicate? How are you going to leverage your CRM and to do it? Are you going to create uh, client appreciation events? Um, are you going to be going on six month review, you know, home valuation reviews? Is, are you, you know, how often are you following up with them and putting it and putting it into a system? So once, you know, and, and like I said, you know, if you, if you, if social media, if Facebook and Instagram are going to be one of your key lead sources. Well, you got to build a strategy. Okay, what are you going to post? When are you going to post? How often are you going to post? Uh, what What's the call to action? That's always the thing that's missing on exactly. on, on most marketing pieces. Uh, most marketing pieces I see are nothing but an announcement. Yep. Okay, hey, I'm here. Okay, well, <laughs> there needs to be some call to action because there's 38 to 40,000 of us who've got active licenses. <laughs> who are here? <laughs> <laughs> who are here, yeah. So it's it's really just putting together the strategy of how you're going to reach each of those five. For me personally, identify my, you know, I know my key lead sources and I've got a built out plan on how I'm focusing on each one. And it kills me. Like, for instance, you know, I've got my five, but I've been really, really, I know I need to dominate my neighborhood. 
I, I need to get in there and I've started the process. Every time I see a for sale sign go up, it's just that, it's that kick in the gut. Yep. However, I look back on my other three to five that have been so successful for me. I, you know, it keeps me from going down another rabbit hole that flat out, I just don't have time to, because if I got things that are working for me, I don't want to take away from them exactly. and, and, and start something else. So, uh, so you got the, the who, the how, and probably well, can now. Can I say for the how, if you don't have a CRM, that you're using right now, that should be the first how. Turn off this webinar right now and go to westusacrm.com because you shouldn't be part of this conversation if you're not using a CRM. Exactly. System. I mean, going into the next 2021 with, like, like Kyle just said, your thousands of competitors out in the marketplace, if you're not dripping on your past fear and trying to work on them consistently and staying in front of them, you just be out of the conversation. All right. And then the third thing is, um, and this is the one that we really never – uh, consider and the one that really throws us for a loop, but how much is it going to cost? Um, you, this is your marketing strategy. This is your business plan. And, and for me uh, in sales, the business, the majority of the business plan really is the marketing strategy. So when you've identified your key lead sources and you put together your strategy, you got to determine how much it's going to cost. You can't be surprised every month when, exactly. when bills come. Uh, cost is absolutely everything because at the end of the day if you've picked a lead source um but you can't afford it then maybe we put that on the shelf till 2022 or or the second half of 2021 you don't want to go down uh, you don't want to go down a a lead source and a marketing strategy if you just don't have the money uh, but you got to figure out how much it's going to cost and then where's the money going to come from uh, my rule of thumb, I always encourage agents, especially newer agents, 10% um, of every commission you get for me should be allocated towards marketing, a minimum of 10% um, so that you can take part of that closing and grow it into more closings. But, you, you know, you got to create a budget. You got to know how much is going to cost especially if you're doing any kind of paid advertising, you know, like a sphere of influence. If you're doing events, you, you know, sit down. How many events are you going to do this year? Uh, what are you going to do? How much are they going to cost? And, and you just, you got to know how much things are going to cost. You got to know where the money's going to come from. And when you do this, then you know that it's time to start saving because you don't want to get to a point where something pops up and you're like, oh man, I just don't, I don't have the budget for it. And this, so I'm going to butcher it. I don't know who said it. So I apologize to the person who originally said it. Um, but you're all entrepreneurs, everyone on the call that's a licensed realtor, you're a business owner. The difference between owning a business and having a hobby is having a budget. And if you don't have a budget for your business, you don't know where your money is going. And so you really need to pay attention to your in and outflow. Um, and so I know we're talking about business planning. And I'm going to give a quick shout out. There are a couple of business planning events coming up in meetings, but Carlos Cicero out of the Chandler office is hosting a business planning workshop on um, Thursday of this week. Um, we've posted about it in the Chandler Closed group. Um, if you're interested in getting more information, uh, go to the Chandler Closed Facebook group or shoot me an email, nick at westusa.com, and I'll send you some info. Todd Menard is going to be doing a business planning workshop, uh, a quick one through the Awatuki office this week. Um, so there's a lot of those things coming up. So if you're not sure, because as Mike said, they're not the easiest things to do, sit through one, listen to one, talk to some of the team yep. leaders at West USA, and they all know what they're doing. They all built a business uh, plan because they're team leaders. And then the fourth thing that's not on there because it's called a three pack, <laughs> <laughs> four pack just doesn't make sense. Is uh, a three pack though. Is is t is time management. Yeah. Is managing your calendar. Um, if you're going to build a strategy, you have got to schedule time in to, to implement your strategies. But that's another talk for another day. It's all effort, right? That's, I mean, that's building your business takes effort. You have to invest in this monetarily and time wise in order to, you know, well, to I gain think, clients. It's a hard oh, well, I think thing. it's more than effort, Kyle. I think it's, it's, uh, you know, designed effort. Yeah. Agreed. That old saying that, you know, that my washing machine works hard. <laughs> Well said. Good point. You got you got to you know, it's putting the effort into the right places. But there's a lot of misconception in this business that the that it just comes to you. It's easy money, right? We're just going to find clients. People are going to gravitate towards you. You got to put put money in, put effort in to get business out. Yeah, I'm working with an agent right now. Uh, pretty much just got his license. has got his first deal going. Right. I'm like. The best thing that can happen to you is this falls out of escrow because <laughs> so you can't you 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 don't want to be left with the impression that it's that right. easy. I I, I can't. It's funny. My dad always used to say that the the agent should. Uh, it would be great if every agent was sued on their first. <laughs> so it's hey, Mike, you want to tell us about that? Right, coming from a brokerage standpoint, I've only had threats of lawsuits. <laughs> All right, a few announcements. 